So anyhow, I hope the screen is kind of sort of visible to everyone, but this is our Tuesday, November 1st member meeting and speaker series from Western Cuyahoga no. Audubon. I'm Nancy Howell and I am one of the board members of Western Cuyahoga Audubon. Got a couple things that we have happening. Um, first of all, remember that you can join uh, Western Cuyahoga Audubon by checking out the website at www.wcaudubon.org and click on the membership, uh, only $40 for the year for a single or a couple. And I can't remember what it is for a family, 55, I think. Anyhow, um, consider becoming a member of Western Cuyahoga Audubon. I also wanna mention that our Christmas bird count is on a Friday, it's Friday, December 30th. And wait, wait, don't go yelling. We've done it on, on a weekday before, but since the holidays are falling on the weekends, then our Christmas bird count will take place on Friday. And all birders are, are welcome to participate. New birders, seasoned birders, we want people out. We will we'll be having a uh, get together uh, shortly. I'll have a little bit more information coming up. And of course, we have an e-newsletter that comes out once a week. Uh, you can sign up for that. It arrives uh, by, via MailChimp. And it just reminds you about events that are coming up, programs, updates on happenings. Um, sometimes new things pop up and we want to get things out soon. So, um, so we, again, this is a really helpful thing are these e-newsletters. If you feel like you're getting too many, uh, you can unsubscribe at any time. So I did want to mention the Christmas bird count. Uh, we will be having a virtual pre-Christmas bird count kickoff on Monday, December 12th. And we'll be talking about our count circle, which is called the Lakewood Circle. Uh, we will have an opportunity for participants to sign up for particular areas to cover in our circle. We'll be doing some uh, bird identification reviews. And so we would like people to have friends and family and uh, join the, the pre-Christmas bird count kickoff and really get excited about the Christmas bird count today, which as you can see, is on Friday, December 30th, as I mentioned. And then we are going to be having a dinner and wrap up for the Christmas bird count. Uh, the past couple years, we haven't been able to because of COVID. So uh, on December 30th in the evening, uh, our organization provides the, the dinner and beverages we ask that people, if they want to bring some dessert items, that would be lovely. But we're still in the works and getting the dinner planned. It looks like it's going to be from about 6.30 to 8.30 at the Rocky River Nature Center. What happens there is that we go over our checklists. We, we kind of get all jazzed up about who saw what and where. And um, we just have a really, really nice time. It's a, it's a social event, but it's, it's just a lot of fun. So we hope that you can join us for our Christmas bird count, pre-Christmas bird count kickoff, the count itself, and then certainly at dinner. All righty, Michelle. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Brocious. I am a board member um, at Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society and field trip co-coordinator. Next slide, please. All right, I'm going to cover our upcoming bird walks, our holiday raffle that launched today, and how you can connect with us on social media. Next slide. All right, uh, please join us the second Saturday of every month for our second Saturday bird walks. The next one is on November 12th at 9 a.m. at the Rocky River Nature Center. 
They meet between the upper and lower parking lots and then take a few hours to walk the nature center trails. Bill Dunninger, Dave Grasskepper, Ken Gober, and Al Rand are our leaders for the walk. Last year in November, we saw brown creepers, tree sparrows, two pileated woodpeckers, 10 downy woodpeckers, and a resident barred owl. Join us this Saturday to see what November has in store for us this year. All right, next slide, please. All right, this past second Saturday was held on October 8th, and here is Bill Dininger's report. He says the October 2022 second Saturday of the month bird walk started and ended with temperatures at 49 degrees. It was partly sunny and pleasant. 19 observers tallied 37 species. Many of the expected species were present. We had several nice sightings, including a group of about 50 red-winged blackbirds and both ruby crown kinglets and golden crown kinglets. A red-breasted nuthatch made a quick appearance. The yellow rump warbler was spotted in several locations, including nice looks of several yellow rump warblers eating poison ivy berries. One rusty blackbird made a quick appearance. All right, next slide, please. I like this photo. Look how poofy that yellow rump Thank warbler you. is. So cute. Eating a poison ivy berry. Mm -hmm. All right, please join us the fourth Saturday of every month for the Tremont Towpath Trail Urban Bird Walks. We are running these walks through November this year. So this one on November 26th is the last one of the year. We will not meet in December for this walk. We meet at the Cleveland Metro Parks parking lot on Abbey Avenue, just west of Sokolowski's University Inn. From there, your bird walk leaders, Nancy Howell and Al Rand, will guide you north through the Scranton Flats area of the towpath. The next walk is Saturday, November 26th at 9 a.m., so be sure to mark your calendar. All right, next slide. All right, so um, WCAS has received very charitable donations of new and like new holiday decorations and other festive items to help you get into the holiday spirit and for a good cause. Your participation in this raffle will help us to fund a scholarship or two for a youth and or educator to meet their needs in connecting with nature, whether that be a camp experience, continuing education requirement, or tools to use in the field, such as a pair of binoculars. Um, WCAS will match up to $300 raised, uh, you can browse baskets and purchase your raffle tickets at our online store. Uh, tickets are one for $5 or five for 20. Each basket is its own store item, so ticket bundles cannot be split across baskets. Uh, the drawing for basket winners will take place during our member meeting on Tuesday, December 6th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. Um, however, winners do not need to be present. And I'll go ahead and I'll put that link in the chat as well after I'm done with my my piece here. Terrific. Thank you. All right. And a final slide for me. Uh, please stay connected with us in between our virtual and in-person activities by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Be sure to use hashtag WC Audubon when you post a bird photo on Instagram for a chance to be featured on our Instagram page. If selected, I will reach out to you with details. Also, many of our virtual programs are recorded, <clears throat> like the speaker series meeting and our virtual field trips. Um, oh, I, we don't do the virtual field trips anymore. I'm sorry. Um, the speaker series meeting uh, that I mentioned and can be found on our WC Audubon YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. All right. That's it for me, I think. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Michelle. Sure. And Drina Nemes uh, is our book discussion uh, series coordinator. And Drina's with us and is going to share information about, I don't know, are you going to talk about the past book discussion and the upcoming ones? How about that? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Next slide, please. Well, our book series uh, has already begun. We had our first session October 18th, but January 31st in the next year, 2023, and April 18th, 2023, are two more chances for you to join us. Next slide, please. Oops. So um, of the three books uh, we're reading this year, I'll just mention again, Hurricane Lizards and Plastic Squid because it is a fabulous read. And then in January, we'll be talking about a pocket guide to pigeon watching, getting to know the world, the world's most misunderstood bird by Rosemary Moscow. Then in April, 
about six months from now, A World on the Wing, The Global Odyssey of Migratory Birds by Scott Widensall. And this has been a bestseller. So wonderful, wonderful material for people who love birds. Next slide, please. I do like to mention and let people know about the environment of the America's Bird Club. And coming up Thursday, November 17th at 8 p.m., they will feature an author. He will be there and talking about his book, How Birds Evolve. The author is Douglas. I'm not sure how to pronounce F-U-T-U-Y-M-A, so I will try to. Um, and he his book is How Birds Evolve, What Science Reveals about their origin, lives, and diversity. Next slide, please. And then we have, I like to talk a little bit about David Lindo, who has been with the uh, Audubon Society with us for the last couple of years. And he is the um, founder of Urban Birder. He has a series of many conversations and Coming up in November, on November 8th, he'll, his talk is Bird Conservation Within China, and he'll have a guest speaker talking about that. And uh, that is produced in Europe, so our time would be 2 p.m. So if you're at all interested in uh, this wonderful series with David Lindo, uh, the Urban Bird birderworld.com slash live dash webinars. And then I just wanted to mention uh, as another wonderful media event, Tomorrow Night Nature on PBS at eight o'clock. Their, their um, program is called Woodpecker, The Whole Story. H-O-L-E, The Whole Story. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Drina. And remember that those e-newsletters that come out once a week, this kind of information, you know, if we seem to be piling a lot of stuff on right now, this is the type of information that we break down week by week. This is what's coming up. This is what's coming up. This is what's to register for. So, so don't feel overwhelmed. We've got lots and lots going on all the time. And Amanda Sabrowski is our coffee coordinator. And Amanda is with us this evening. Hello. Uh, next slide. Um, this is just a slide to remind, remind you the benefits of um, Smithsonian certified bird friendly coffee. And our um, supplier is the only US supplier of this coffee. Uh, the coffee shade grown organic and fair trade. And that allows um, the rainforest to remain uncut, uh, leaving habitats for the birds. You can order the coffee there at that link on uh, WCAS's website. And we do only order it quarterly now. And I thank everyone's cooperation in that because it's allowed us to group the order so we can get free shipping now. So uh, shipping can really eat into the, um, the profits and that decreases the number of projects that we can do. The next order will go out January 10th, uh, but you can order at any time. And then we just you know keep track of all the orders and send it out the 10th. Then I deliver it as quickly as I can get it. They usually send it out within a week. So thanks again to everyone for uh, grouping your orders. Thanks so much, Amanda. Yes, and it is, seems to have worked quite well with our, our quarterly uh, ordering, but thanks everyone. Um, before we start here, um, Amanda put something in the chat about the chimney swift towers. Amanda, you wanna expand on that? Oh yeah, thank you. I didn't know where 
uh, you might want me to put that. The Chimney Swift Tower uh, at Old Field and South Chacrin Reservation fell over. Mm -hmm. It had been put up a long time ago by probably, we, we're not sure, it was probably a Boy Scout troop that put it up. Anyway, it fell over. So they said it can't really be repaired properly. And so, but they'd like to have it there because it was used. It's been used every year. So, um, he he asked if I knew of any like anyone that wanted to put one up. So I have put the word out that if there's any scouts out there that want to uh, take that as a project, um, we w that uh, me, I Chimney Swift Society will uh, provide money for the materials. Who oh, knows, maybe they'll put up more than one if we can get enough people. So if anybody knows of scouts, um, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts, whatever, um, really, uh, or 4-H, you know, or any organization, young people's organization, whatever, um, really contact them and we may be able to help out and get that uh, Swift Tower uh, back up, hopefully in plenty of time for the Swifts to utilize it uh, this coming spring. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. putting that. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me tell everyone about that. Sure. All righty. Well, I did want to mention uh, next month in December, we have uh, a couple of uh, naturalists. Well, Dan Best is a retired Geauga Park naturalist and Rachel McKinney is a naturalist. Uh, and they will uh, show, do the presentation going for the gold three decades of prothonotary warbler husbandry. And that will take place on Tuesday, December 6th. Um, so three, 30 years of prothonotary warbler nesting, nest box is put up and I don't wanna to go too much into detail, but if you've seen a prothonotary warbler, it's probably come out of Geauga County somewhere because these folks have been working tirelessly. But this month, we have our own Western Cuyahoga Audubon board member, Marianne Romito, and she is our Climate Watch Coordinator for Western Cuyahoga Audubon. Now, um, so as I mentioned, she's the Climate Watch Coordinator. She's an enthusiastic birder and not just a member of Western Cuyahoga, but also Kirtland Bird Club and other birding groups in Ohio. She has done bird surveys for the Cuyahoga Valley, the National Park, Cleveland Metro Parks, Western Reserve Land Conservancy. She's passionate about habitat conservation and enjoying nature. Marianne and her husband, Tom, have traveled extensively in the US and Canada, enjoying nature's diversity, adding to their bird life lists and sampling coffee in many, many coffee houses. So without any further ado, I am going to stop share and Marianne will bring up her oh. presentation. Thank you, Nancy. Let's see if I can get this done right here. Um, I think it's this one. <laughs> okay, where's my... Now, where's my lovely program? No, nope, that's not it. Hang in there a second while I find it. There it is. Okay. you lovely. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We hope you will all enjoy this program on Audubon's newest project called Audubon Climate Watch. Actually, this program has been around in existence for a couple of years now, but it was in test mode only in a few areas of the country. Last summer, the program was opened up to the entire country. And I went out and tested the software for the project and found a few bugs. So we decided here at Western Cuyahoga that we wouldn't launch our program, our, our Climate Watch program until this winter. So we're ready to start. So, and I gotta get my screen up here on the next screen. Alrighty, so, come on. Okay, for a bit of history on this project, 
In October of 2019, Audubon released a comprehensive report on how 604 North American bird species would fare under climate change. The report, Survival by Degrees, 389 species on the brink, allowed us a glimpse at what could be if we do not take action to stabilize climate change. If we do take action now, we could improve the chances for hundreds of bird species. By stabilizing carbon emissions and holding warming to like 1.5% 1.5 degrees centigrade or the equivalent of about 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial levels, 76% of vulnerable species will be better off and at least 150 species would no longer be vulnerable to extinction from climate change. Um, I'm gonna give you the link to this, this bird report, this bird, this, this survival by degrees report at the end of my program. So look forward to that. The, so I have to switch slides here. Okay. So in order to understand how birds may respond to climate change, Audubon scientists modeled the ranges of 604 species by linking bird occurrence data with environmental information to estimate the current range of the species. They then projected this onto different climate change scenarios to see how the species range may change as the climate changes across North America. So in order to understand how the birds respond to climate change, Audubon model, that's not the right one, hang on. This is wrong, wrong, wrong slide, sorry. <laughs> here it is. Okay, so here, using the wood thrush as an example, we keep the climate change to 1.5 degrees centigrade. With reduced emissions, the wood thrush and the other species are far less at risk. You can see by the amount of yellow here on this, this map that it re represents a stable range. If the temperature would go up to three degrees above pre-industrial pre levels, levels, the wood thrush would lose most of its range. So you can see all this red here that it's gonna pretty, pretty much lose all that range. The Audubon scientists looked at all 604 species in this way to understand which species were vulnerable to climate change based on range loss and range gain. After assessing each of the 604 species vulnerability to climate change, more than half, 64%, of birds are climate vulnerable. This means that the future of birds is dire in the fa face of climate change. The key takeaway here is that Audubon wants observers to provide data on key species in order to validate their predictive models so they can make a case with legislators. And I will explain how to do this a little bit later. To understand how well birds will follow these changes, we really need climate predictive informed monitoring on a large scale. As climate change is a landscape scale issue, we need to track how birds are responding in real time to both validate Audubon's models and to improve model predictions. Audubon's strength has always been our network of people interested in the well being of birds. Audubon volunteers have been on the forefront of informing the science of bird conservation since the first Christmas bird count over 100 years ago. Western Cuyahoga, specifically, has played a key role in surveys such as the important bird areas, surveys for the Cleveland Metro Parks and the Western Land Conservancy, and the Christmas bird count. 
In response to National Audubon's climate science, thousands of people asked Audubon how they could help make the world a better place for birds. People in nature are intimately intertwined. So finding a local, tangible, and deeply personal way to help is important. So we are building on that tradition to help test these predictions for how birds will react to climate change. And this way we can help the birds that we love by providing much needed da data to Audubon. Climate Watch is a new program started by Audubon to monitor bird ranges of our local birds. As climate change is one of the biggest threats to the birds around the world, community scientists can now help us find out how birds are responding to climate change as it is happening through Audubon's Climate Watch program. Climate Watch was developed to document how species are re responding to the climate change as it is happening. It is soundly rooted in the science of climate change range pr shift predictions. We are looking at how birds are shifting their ranges in the near term, the 2020s. Climate Watch surveys are science driven and based on the latest science on birds and climate change and updated models from Audubon's 2019 Survival by Degrees report. The set, this sets it apart from other community science programs as it is monitoring with a purpose. The purpose is to test how birds shift their ranges with climate change as it is happening and to help improve future range shift projections for bird species. We are able to do this as the protocol was designed specifically to quantify the result, the response of birds to climate change. To test these responses, Climate Watch focuses on a few target species. These species have good models that predict the current range of the species well and predict change into the future. Many of the species are considered climate vulnerable. These species have wide geographic coverage across the country and are present in summer and winter. So we can look at the broad changes to both, in both seasons due to climate change. The target species are also easy to identify and charismatic, which makes them easy, make, makes them fun and easy for people to survey. And here are the 12 species that Audubon has selected to monitor. The five that are in our area are circled in red. They are the Eastern Bluebird, White-Breasted, Nuthatch, red-breasted nuthatch, American goldfinch, and eastern towhee. So to emphasize again how climate change is predicted to change the ranges of birds in Northeast Ohio, I have selected my favorite, the scarlet tanager. And it, as you can see here, this is the current range of the scarlet tanager. And the yellow means that it's stable. One and a half degrees Celsius higher than current temperature and the scarlet tanager is no longer stable. The western section of our area becomes peach colored, which is slice, slightly wor worsening, and the orangey colored means definitely worsening. The red represents lost range completely. At two degrees, which is 
two degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, the situation for the scarlet tanager is much worse. And at three degrees or 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit, most of the range is lost except for the snow belt. And even that's not very stable. I want to point out these little squares on the map here that you can see here. This is how Audubon generated their models for North America. On the next slides, I'm going to show you how Audubon took the, this model and brought it down to a local level. Here is a, the, a map with 10 by 10 squares on it, 10 by 10 kilometer squares, which is roughly equal to six miles that Audubon used with their GPS, GIS tool. It's a, this is a snapshot of a portion of Western Cuyahoga, Audubon, or Western Cuyahoga County. Each of these grain, and I told you already that each of these squares equals 10 by 10 square, 10 by 10 kilometers square. So, the climate watch occurs over two time periods, one in the summer and one in the winter. The National Audubon Winter Survey runs from January 15th through February 15th each year. In order to make this more fun, Western Cuyahoga has chosen Saturday, January 21st to monitor for our five target species. If the weather is not suitable for surveying that date, we'll postpone to another day before February the 15th. The summer period runs from May the 15th to June the 15th. We will select for a date for this one at a later date. The best part of this project is that it's open to anybody to participate. You don't have to be an expert birder. Climate Watch is open to birders of all levels. We would like to have teams of one to three participants per square. One person will be the square leader. If you don't have somebody to bird with, I will happily find you someone to go with. If you wanna participate, just contact me and I'll give you that information at the end too. So here is the protocol for, Aud for Audubon's Climate Watch program. There are five steps, and I know this picture is a bit small, but I will go over these steps in more detail next. The program was developed to monitor the 12 species of the songbirds because they have strong model prediction in the next 10 years. Audubon picked species that have wide enough range across the U.S. and are easily identified. Step one is to identify the target species. Two is to select the square. Three is to select 12 point counts within that square. Four is to conduct, is to conduct the point counts. And then five is to submit the data. So here's step one. Step one, Western Cuyahoga selected the five species that I mentioned earlier, white-breasted nuthatch, red-breasted nuthatch, eastern towhee, eastern bluebird, and American goldfinch. On Saturday, January 21, we will monitor between 8 a.m. and noon. And if the weather is too miserable in the morning, you can survey in the afternoon up to 3 p.m. We are suggesting that you focus on the white-breasted nuthatch and the American goldfinch. 
because in order to monitor for this, the monitor protocol to work, 12 points have to be surveyed in a square for each species. And we think that the white-breasted nuthatch and the American goldfinch are the most likely to fit that bill. So here's an overview of part of Northeast Ohio. Our area is much larger than this. Step two is to select a square you'd like to survey. Once you've decided you'd like to participate, contact me and we can select a square together that works for you. Then I will send you a more detailed picture of your square. This map does not include all of our area. It just wouldn't fit and if, on my slide and still be somewhat readable. I mean, you can, you can see here that the words Brunswick and Richfield and North Royalton. If I tried to stick our entire area on here, you wouldn't see any of these little words. Step three is to select survey locations. Each square will have a leader and that can be you. Each square leader will select 12 survey locations within that square at which, the, at which to conduct the surveys based on their knowledge of the area. Each of these survey locations should be located with, within the best habitat that you are able to identify for the target species within the square. At least, and at least 200 meters or about 200 yards away from your other survey points. This square, as you can see here, is, is the area around the airport. Here's the airport, Rocky River Nature Center is over here. Holy Cross, is, Holy Cross Cemetery is over here. And you could easily, well, you can easily fit 12 points in here, but you need to find locations where you believe that the white-breasted nuthatch and the goldfinch are. So one suggestion would be to drive up Valley Parkway and look for the appropriate areas. Um, driving is you driving is definitely suggested in order to com to complete your surveys because six miles across and six miles across you know across this way and across that way is a pretty big area. I hear whistles. There might be a football practice. So you should select your points using your personal knowledge of the landscape. You should check out your points ahead of time. You can do this by going out in the field and doing this, or you can use the Audubon GIS tool and plotting the points on a map. Personally, I think the method, the field method is a lot easier. I did use, did try to use the GIS mapping tool last summer and it was pretty freaky to tell you the truth. It just didn't want to cooperate with me. Um, I think going out and just looking for the appropriate areas like little woodland areas and fields would be the best way to do that. You can survey for all five species, but we think that in our immediate area, it would be easier to find 12 points in your square for the white-breasted nuthatch and the American goldfinch. So we suggest that you, you focus on those two species when you're selecting your point locations. Step four is to conduct your surveys, each of these uh, at each of your 12 points. By conducting a five minute stationary point count when conducting when conducting your surveys, we ask that you record all the birds that you detect within 100 meters of your survey point. Please record the presence of any nest boxes or feeders at your point, as well as your chosen target species. Keep the species checklist, keep, keep a separate checklist for each point. All surveys within a square should be conducted on the same day, January 21st, before noon, although 
afternoon is, is a, an option if you need more time or if the weather is suboptimal in the morning. Surveys should be conducted with one to three participants. And on average, surveying 12 points takes about three hours. This can vary depending on terrain and the distance between your points. So there are three options for collecting data in the field. We have the Audubon app, we have paper form, and we have eBird. The paper form is a great backup for and it only takes a few minutes. And I really recommend that you take paper with you anyway. You never know when your device is going to fail you. If you have a smartphone, though, the Audubon app is the simplest way to report your surveys. The paper form takes a little more time. Um, and the eBird is good if you're already familiar with eBird. If you're not, stick with either the Audubon app or the paper form. So first of all, here's a, here's a picture of the, of the Audubon's mobile app. Um, let's see. If you'd like to use that, you can download it from the link down here at the bottom, audubon.org Audubon slash app. It's good on Android phones and on iPhones. Please note that the climate, when you, when you go into this app, down here and you, you click on my uh, my Audubon, you'll find during the during the, the periods, the January to February 15 period, the Audubon Climate Watch will be active. It's not active the rest of the year. So if you need help with this, give me a call and we and I can walk you through it. So and this is what the this is what the it looks like once you open it up. Okay, if you submit your data using the Audubon app, there is no further steps to take, as the app is, is submitted as the data is submitted automatically. Um, and then let's go through this just real quickly. The things that you're going to need on here is your first name and your last name, your zip code. The organization affiliation would be Western Cuyahoga Audubon. This survey point would be automatically generated with the app. The square watch, square ID number is something that when you, it, that's the square number of that green 10 by 10 um, kilometer square that we'll select for you. And I'll give you that at the time that you choose a square. Point number here would be one out of 12 up to 12 out of 12. Location not name. This is probably the most important thing that you're gonna need on here. This is a description of where your point is at. So say you're surveying at the, at the field next to Tyler Bar Barn, write that in there, field next to Tyler Barn, or at, at the intersect, or if or another point would be at the intersection of Main Street and Second Street, or whatever your wherever your point is, and a good good a good description of where your point is at. The date would be automatically generated. This is not uh, this is obviously not correct, but it's going to be the the date and time. It's going to be January twenty first, twenty twenty three, plus the time that you're there. You put it, you put in your number of observers, and then down here you tick off you tick off your target species. So unfortunately, my slide cut off the target species that we're focusing on, which is the white-breasted nuthatch and the American goldfinch. But you would dot, put, click on these little circles here and, tar and select those species. Then during your five-minute count, you come over to this area. Now this area is actually, okay, this is all one long thing on the Audubon app. Your target, your species observed are actually below the target species. And you click the birds that you see during your five minute count. So if you see two bluebirds, you tick two bluebirds. If you see one white-breasted nuthatch, you click one. And if you don't click 
if you don't see anything, if during your five minute count, nobody is there and nobody's calling, you just leave everything blank. Zero is still data. Then you click over here where it says yes or no for nest boxes and yes or no for feeders. And you hit submit and you're done. That's the beauty of the Audubon app. You said it's a one step process. You're, you're, you're in the field, you, you do your surveys and you're done. You move to a next point and you repeat the process. Okay, I put the mice slide. The paper form. The paper form has all the same exact information that we just covered in the in the in the Audubon app. You would fill out one of these for each point. So you would need six pieces of paper here. So that this this one was would be for point one. This is this is for point two. And again, I can't emphasize enough that taking a paper forms with you is really nice because if your device clonks out on you, you're gonna be really upset. But the drawback to doing paper form is that you're not done when you're when you finish filling out your forms in the field, you need to come home and submit your data for each count through the Audubon portal. On the Audubon portal, the, the title will be changed. Instead of being Climate Watch Spring 2022, it's gonna say Winter 2023. When we have our chat, you will you will let me know if you're going to use paper forms instead of instead of the apps and I'll send you the link to this portal and you can submit your data. So again, this, this is kind of the same, same exact information here. The, the, um, the, the location you're gonna stick in here, the, the, the description of your, no, excuse me, the, the description of your, Field point is going to go over here by location name, put the date and the time, the number of observers. You check off, check off things like white-breasted nuthatch. Oh, stop that. Uh, white-breasted nuthatch and American goldfinch. And then over here, you click off the number of birds that you actually saw. So if you had two white-breasted nuthatches, you put that down here. Down here, you, you say yes or no to the number of boxes, nest boxes that were present and the feeders. And you do one of these for every single point that you do, which is 12. Then you hit submit and you've got, you're done with you know, the number, number one. And then you do one of these for the, each point. Okay, give me a second to find my slides. Okay, eBird, this is an example of how eBird looks. I, I realize that this is the, an outdated version of eBird, but it, it still gives you a general idea of what you should be filling in here. If you prefer to use eBird here, here's what you should do. The, in the, in the information you submit in your comment section, which is down here, you're going to want to put in your chosen target species, whether or not you had any nest boxes or feeders, and a description of your point location. Then you go up here and you click your, you, whether you're submitting a complete list, which is yes, that it was stationary, the number of observers, and that you counted for five minutes. And over here is where you tick off your birds that you see. You can actually count everything that you see during that five minutes. It doesn't matter. I Audubon will just ignore anything that's not the target species. So 
So when you go home, you're still not done. Okay, you've submitted it to eBird, but you're not done. You have to submit it to the Audubon portal. And they have a special portal for eBird checklists. The first thing you have to do is go into your eBird and write down this number that you see here. It's, it has an S and then a bunch of digits afterward. Write that down for all of your 12 points. And you're gonna go to this link here, which is the link for the Audubon portal where you submit your checklists. And I'll show you that here, in just a second. Okay. Okay, here's the portal, what it looks like. You fill in your name and your, la your first name, your last name, your email, your zip code, and your Audubon chapter would be Western Cuyahoga, and you tick off the target species. Over here, you would select winter for the winter count. And then this is where you put your S number that came from your point number. And over here is the eBird, the number of nest boxes that you count and the feeders, if there's any nest boxes or feeders. And the nice thing about this portal is that you can do them all on one submission. So one, two, and then it, you keep scrolling down the list and you all the way up to 12 and, you, and then you can submit all 12 of them at the same time. Then you hit sub, submit and then they, the, um, you, you, once you've clicked hit submit, then you're done with eBird. So I have covered all three ways that you enter your data and submit them to Audubon. So just want to emphasize here that this survival by degrees change report is the best place to see high level views of our predictions for rain shifts for over 300 species starting in 2020 and going through 2080. It includes information on how their ranges are predicted to shrink, shift, or expand and can show you long-term trends predicted for your area. And here is the link. This is the link I told you about. So let's see if I can copy that into the page. Nope, I can't copy that. If you want to see that again, I will come back to that slide. Not a problem. So um, this is a quote from one of our volunteers. It says, we like the fact that we are contributing even in a small way to a scientific effort that will hopefully benefit the birds we love to watch. The data collected does not disappear into a large database. Rather, National Audubon compiles the data at regular intervals. In other words, the Survival by Degrees website is constantly updated. And what are your next steps? The next steps is to give me a call or send me an email. And remember the date, January 21, 2023. We're gonna have a great time that day and we're gonna go out and monitor for birds and find out what's happening with our climate. So, any questions? Hey, Marianne, what's the, um, the rain date again? We don't have a rain date yet. Oh, I thought you said you did. Okay. No, I said I said if if it wasn't um, what I said was you did. is that if we didn't have come on back up here. Oh, wait a minute. If we didn't, if January twenty first was not good, we would set a date for later on. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, we're we're going to kind of play that by ear. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, Marian, that was. Fabulous. I know there's a lot of information that she presented. So what you could do now, Marianne, is to stop your share and hopefully okay. we'll be able to see all of our lovely Absolutely. participants. Absolutely. Where am I? Wait, give me a second to figure That's this out. That's all right. Maybe people can start thinking about questions that maybe you want to clear mm. that you want clarified or that we can all help with okay um i know there i like i say there was a lot of information but 
really when it's broken down into those few steps, uh, it's really not that mm -hmm. bad. Stop sharing. There we go. I found it. Yay. Yeah. Okie doke. All right. Fantastic. So again, you can unmute. You can put a question in the chat. You can use your little uh, reactions and you know do a hand raise. Um, so again, anybody have a question? Hey, Marianne, this is Rob. Could you put that link uh, or put or send it out in the chat again? Which one? Again? The survival by degrees report? Yeah. Yeah, but, I, I will no. attempt to do that. Well, not the report, but the the um, link that we go to. For what? I, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. The one that was... Um, to sign up? To sign up, yeah. Yeah, okay. You, you call me. <laughs> you call me. I'll, let me let me put my, my my phone number and my email in here. How's that? That's fine. Okay. Here's my phone number and I'll put my email in here. That's too many numbers in your phone number. Oh dear. I'll, I'll do it again. Let me just finish my. Uh, and I'm just going to mention that I will bet if you hit the National Audubon uh, society website and put in survival by degrees, I will bet that uh, information will come up uh, and you can take a look at it there. Um, okay. Marianne said she's also going to put that link. Yeah, and, I'm uh, going to do, do, going to attempt to do that now. We tried to do that before that here, maybe this might work. Copy, maybe I'll get lucky, paste. It worked. Okay, there's the link to the Audubon Survival by Degrees uh, report. It's wonderful. Really a good, great report. You can you can ch ch test out any bird you want and find out what's going to happen to it. What I found really amazing was that our the robin is not in good shape. We're not going to have a whole lot of robins in North America anymore. So check it out. A question came in from Sherilyn. Uh, how many squares? Whoops, where did that go? Hey, come back here. Come back here. Question. How many squares are in our area? And what if all squares don't have coverage? Okay. Right so let's, now. Let's get those, let's get those two okay. covered. And then there's, I think there's okay. how many more. squares? A lot. I mean, a lot. I, I would just, say I'm not sure if she's talking about the the um. 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer squares or the little tiny squares? Well, the little tiny squares are 10 by 10. Oh, okay, that's right, yeah. That's yeah, right. the little tiny squares are 10 by 10. And there's a lot of squares. I, I, if I tried to put, put that whole map in there, the, the um, our area, I, I, I've tried to get an answer as to how big our area is but I'm the coordinator for the Cleveland area. The next nearest coordinator is Canton. So anything from the lake down to the end of Summit County, I would imagine is pretty much our area and probably from Lorraine to Ashtabula because I don't see any other coordinators yet. If, if you're living in one of those areas and you wanna do a count, in one of those squares, I'll gladly give you a square. Just give me a call, shoot me an email. We can set up. We can set up a call, and we can pick a square for, square for you that's convenient for you. All right. And if all squares don't have coverage, is that a problem? Well, we're going to be doing this long term, so hopefully, if we don't cover them all this year. Or this season, we can we can cover them in the spring because this is going to go into the 2080s. We probably all won't be around by that time. We're going to have to pass this down to the next generation. <laughs> so we'll be it, really, really old. <laughs> yeah, we'll be really, really old. So we're, this is you know we're we're passing this on to the next generation too, so that they realize what climate change means, and that we've got to do something about it. 
Yeah, especially for the birds and the habitat. And for us too. Yeah. Um, the, the remainder of the question, do all areas encompass the same total area if other chapters would like to cover an area? So again, I know Sherilyn is uh, with Akron Audubon, and so she may want to work with uh, folks or the Akron Audubon may want to check their area out. Well, absolutely. Um, like I said, right now, I'm the only coordinator in this area. If somebody else from the Akron area wants to sign up to be a coordinator, um, you can do that. You just go to the Audubon Survival by Degrees website and sign up and then you can be in charge of that area. I don't have a problem with that. Um, in the meantime, though, I, I'm kind of taking responsibility for anything so that we can, you know, so if so somebody from Akron wants to do a, a square down there, I will gladly print out the, the square and send them a picture so that they know exactly where their borders are on their square. Here's another great question. Uh, this one's from Kent. Uh, do the 12 locations in a square, the 12 points, remain constant or can they change by season or year? Yes, they can. They can change. Um, the, but because it, it's, it's the whole idea that the square itself is the important part. They're trying to determine if that square, that 10 by 10 kilometer square, still has these target birds in it. If they don't, you know, so, you know, say, say the, they, they, the field that you monitored last year has been overgrown or, you know, heavens forbid it gets developed, and, but there's a field down the road that's now suitable, you can monitor there in another year. And actually, that's a that's a good point, Marianne. You know, if this is going to be long term, fields do grow up, um, forests get blown down. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that that's a that's a good point. Good, that was a good question. Yes, thank you, thank you for the good great question. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a, a nice thank you that Courtney sent. Um, so so I'm just gonna. Do a, a question. Um, I'm considering an area that is pretty much all park, so it's not going to be developed at least in housing development. It may become something else. Um, and so, and if I want to look for American goldfinch, which is a target species, and um, white-breasted nuthatch, with the other couple subspecies as as adjunct what do I pick a, one or another habitat or do I kind of say oh I know nut hatches like woody area wooded areas and goldfinches like fields so should I have both of those in my in my uh on my point well what I did this past summer was that I just focused on the American goldfinch because it, the area around my house doesn't have have a lot of woods, not enough for 12 points worth, but it did have enough open areas like for, for goldfinch. So I focused mainly on the goldfinch and I went out and did everything just for the goldfinch and to see if I had anything. Um, so, and so I did cover 12 points for goldfinch. Some of the areas didn't have any goldfinch during the five minutes I was out there counting though, which was disappointing. But that's what happens. Excuse me. So did that answer your question, Nancy? Yeah, because I'm considering again, having a little bit of both habitats where I could find the two main target species. Yeah. And if the other ones come by in that five minutes. Yeah, then you're lucky, mm -hmm. you're lucky. It's. There are certain areas in the country where they have points where they can actually get like the three species of bluebirds all in one place. And, you know, we're, we're not going to have that here, obviously, because we don't get the three species of, of, of bluebirds. 
But there might be some places here where we could actually get red-breasted and white-breasted nuthatches in the same area. I don't know if we're going to have, well, maybe down in the Cuyahoga Valley, we might have more areas where you can get 12 species of 12 points for the two species of nuthatches. That's a possibility. But up here near the lake, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, I see. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe some of the our Akron area members will be in touch with you for this day. That would be great. I would. I welcome them to do that. That would be terrific. Um, can one of your points include feeders in a backyard? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, does it have to? I mean, I, I, I'm, ass I'm assuming that whoever does. And I think Michelle signed up for um, the Rocky River Nature Center. She's going to have feeders if she stops at the na at the nature center. Um, can one of your points include feeders in our backyard? Yes. Does it have to be in a park without feeders? No, no. It can be any area that you think that you're going to get goldfinches, or if you're going to get that's that's why they have the question. You know, are there nest boxes or are there feeders? They want to know. So obviously, you know, if, if there's feeders there, you're, you're probably going to get some goldfinches there. Um, now, the nest boxes are not going to be as germane during the winter season as they are in the summer season. But the feeders are going to be a year round thing if people are feeding both seasons. Nice. All righty. Well, I hope you get a lot of folks uh, contacting you. Yes, uh, either please. by phone or by the Western Cuyahoga. Get Marianne Romito at wcaudubon.org. And um, if you have any questions, uh, info at wcaudubon.org. I send that information. I look at that all the time, and I can pass that along to Marianne or whomever. So. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Marianne. That was fabulous. Um, and I think we're going to get some some folks doing the, the climate watch counts. How was our date chosen? Okay, Nancy and Michelle, tell them. <laughs> oh. It was a board decision. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess, how was the date chosen? <laughs> we, all three of us were available that day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I like that. All righty. Well, again, thanks, everyone. Uh, have a good evening, and uh, we'll be hopefully talking with you or having communicating with you uh, about Climate Watch or some other things that we have going on. Yes. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Okay. Doke.